is should sport be something that you do for just a pure passion or should it become uh, professionalized in any way? Or maybe we should just take professionalism right off the table and completely change the entire yeah, sports landscape. It. Would that be a fair question to dig into? Well, I would say that you can look at, like you said, you can look at both sides. One, why wouldn't everything just be, you know, it's free. If you don't, if you don't really just have a passion for it, don't let money taint your behavior. Right. And that's, that's probably an easy one to kind of argue. Uh, but then you can say, well, yeah, but if I can get paid doing what I love, then I get to do more of it. And I'm naturally actually more likely to give back to the sport, back to the association, back to the community, back to my friends and family and all that sort of stuff. If I'm happier because I'm doing something that I actually like, because I'm getting paid from it, not having to fractionalize myself to working at McDonald's to fund my parkour trip to my buddy's place. You know what I mean? And I can see both. And I'm, I kind of naturally lean on the other side, of course, because um, everyone, that's how everyone talks at least. And honestly, the parkour guys talk the same way. It might have been the way that they started off in this theory of, you know, um, where it's all free and, you know, essence. And I, I don't know what else. I'm not I'm going to put words in the parkour guys' mouths, obviously, but maybe that's how it started. Um, but I talked to parkour guys and they wouldn't be doing it unless they got paid and Red Bull was covering them or this, that, or the other. So, I would say that there's maybe underlyingly there's a bit more of that capitalism uh, in the parkour world. Um, I'm sure there's some purists, just like there's purists that don't compete in the freestyle trampoline world. You know what I mean? Um, and you're going to get a mixed bag, of course. But I can see that there's two divisions. People that say, no, I want to get paid to do what I love so I can do more of it and I'll be uh, effectively better for the community because I'm getting covered to do this. Others saying, well, let's not taint sure. the water supply uh, with capitalism. Well, you know, I think part and of all, it yeah, really so, depends on your philosophy. You know, 15 years ago, it was a don't compete, uh, don't compete, don't make money. And that's not true. Maybe yeah, about 15 years ago, what I started in 2006. So what is that? 17 years ago or something. And then it's grown from there. So people now accept competitions. They, they accept making money. So it's this evolution. Um, also there's really a, a strong lack of competition is also at, at the core kind of ethos of, of the parkour sport. And so that's been interesting as I think we had these barriers to kind of overcome psychologically, you could say as a community that said, you know, we don't want the money. We want to be purists. We don't want to compete because this discipline has a history of non-competition, but then kind of realizing, wait a second, competition can be good from the sport good for the sport it can help it evolve it can bring in money it can be a different wing of the sport and so i think parker is growing up but it just sounds to me like trampoline didn't have some of those barriers i would have some i would agree we didn't have as well we had different barriers right um parkour didn't have you were still off to the side of traditional gymnastics so they didn't even see it really as uh either a competitor or replacement or whatever they see it as now when we said freestyle trampoline we were literally butting heads with the old system directly. And if you look at like snowboarders, you know, just like us, um, snowboarders were kicked off the hills because they're dangerous, urban, pot smoking, whatever's, you know, blah, blah. And they got, they got labeled. And then the traditional skiers kicked them off uh, under this guise of safety and all that sort of stuff, which I think everyone now knows that's just blatantly not true, you know, but it's still, that's the political fight that they were in. We entered the exact same political fight. People would say, oh, great. I hope you break your neck. You're killing children blah, 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 this is all garbage, yada, 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 you know, all this stuff. And we screen grabbed it, you know. Uh, so it's like, haha, if, if their day comes, I want to, you know, really drag you through the mud, I can. So uh, a lot of the critics back then didn't realize that everything was being recorded uh, or they wouldn't have said half of it. Um, but the reality is that we went through that political fight um, and we had to prove that, no, we're this is not that bad. This is actually, we're using hard science here. I come from a kinesiology, psychology background uh, in university and all that. So I knew exactly what the research was actually saying about biological creatures and say, no guys, your, your facts are 40 years wrong. You know, you're 40 years late to uh, what you're doing. You're still preaching stuff that was back in the USSR. You know what I mean? It's like, no, the world's evolved since then. We have new research now about human behavior, uh, psychology and all that. So what you're saying is just factually incorrect. And obviously it's politically motivated because back to capitalism, you're getting paid to try to demonize something that basically takes away your livelihood. Uh, taxi versus Uber, first perfect example, right? It's the exact same thing that we are going through because we basically said, you don't actually need a coach. If you're smart enough and you're motivated enough and have the determination to really put your pieces together and watch YouTube videos and talk to your buddies and figure all that stuff out, like the parkour guys had figured out, you don't need an overlord 
telling you how to rotate your body. You just need to go figure out how to do it safely and progressively. And just like any other sport, you will figure it out. And the biology was very clear. For hundreds of years, the biology, biology has been very clear about that. It's just people have ignored that stuff because they say, oh, if everyone could just do it for free, I don't get you know a fee as a middleman. Uh, quick, let's tell them it's impossible. Let's quickly put up some barriers to entry, and then that'll get me paid as a consultant. You know, and uh, this happens all the time. And you know, I got a guy right now pitching me to get on like DraftKings, and he's like, "Oh, you'll never get on there without uh, you know someone like me opening those doors and get you with the data companies that you need." Oh, I'm the guy. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, or whatever. You know, but this is just what people do because that's how they make a living. So, you know, you can try to you know, beat the uh, the capitalism out of people, but it's it's in there ingrained in the DNA um, in multiple different ways. So I think it's a futile fight to try to, you know, fight the whole thing. I, I'd rather harness that energy and reposition it so it actually helps more people rather than trying to pretend um, that you're just a perfect moralist. You know, there's a time and a place for a more damage. And even the best in the world have, have had coaches, right? So Michael Jordan had a, had Phil Jackson and he had a trainer. Arnold Schwarzenegger had people to help him learn to pose. And we all have those peoples in our in our lives that come along and help us, whether it's friends or people we pay. But then at the same time, there's also this paradigm that some people are incentivized to propagate, and that's that you need me, right? And so I think when I got into parkour, when I saw people doing really good flips, I immediately assumed, of course, they were in gymnastics. And I think for a time there, the people, the only people who learned how to flip were gymnasts but then of course the paradigm is open and we've realized you could have immaculate form and not have ever been a gymnast because you teach yourself and so it's interesting those kind of that change and maybe the freedom that comes with realizing that we don't necessarily need some of those traditional structures to do what we want to do or become what we want to become